Hi folks, this is Lee Murphy, the artist behind art by LeeMurphy.com and the creator of the art you see in these videos here. And this time I thought I would share with you a little bit of a little bit of an artist studio or writing desk tour and kind of and ran about some popular top or topics that are popular with me. What we have here is an old writing desk that's been in my family forever and a chair that I picked out of the back of a uh, glorified junk shop called Antique Shop years ago and it sure didn't look like that when I got it but I taught myself how to fix it up and actually taught myself how to make the leather I don't know if you can see this right here but the leather uh, seat back and stuff like that so it was a neat little skill I learned and actually it's pretty comfortable I was told it's a, like a Roman campaign chair, and it kind of reminds me, like, well, maybe this is what old Marcus Aurelius himself sat in when he was writing his meditations. Anyway, it's actually a pretty comfortable chair, and it was way cheaper than pretty much anything I could have bought new. And this had been sitting around forever and ever. Uh, it was, I don't know whose family member it was, but I had a while ago thought, I was like, well, you know, I need the cash. Uh, I may as well see about selling it, and I got a really unfortunate um, response from the auctioneer who told me, he's like, lady, uh, we won't get enough money to sell this to make it worth, the, you know, make it worth our hourly commission rate. So I'm like, oh, that stinks. And I realized that something like this, um, I could not sell it for enough money to go down to Ikea or someplace like that and buy something new to replacement. And I'm like, oh, man. All right, use my artist's creativity, figure out what to do with it. So I'm like, well, you know, it is a writing desk and I may as well turn it back into that. So let me move this around so I can get to where I can sit one-handedly here. But I figured this would be a nice excuse to do a little artist studio um, and writing desk snoopage. First off here, there's my little Jasper Kitty. It's an oil painting I made of her years ago, giving me um, her very <sighs> trademark stink eye here. So I figured that's a pretty accurate version. And if she was still alive, she'd probably be sitting there throwing these things off the top here. And I know this, of course, there's a reason for that. I, um, I'll talk about that later. And that's not old. That's actually American made. I would pick up stuff like this when I was doing art shows from other artists. This is Lundberg, and I don't even remember the name of the artist I bought this from uh, years ago at art festivals. And way, I mean, of course, these are a lot more expensive than they used to be, but it's not that hard to find good handmade artisanal stuff that lasts. I mean, God, I don't even know how old this thing is. But try to find something this well made now. Even if you could, it would cost you a fortune. So, back to... Uh, do a little good artist writing desk snoopage. You can see where's the cat left that. So I figure with all my antiques, uh, fountain pens and my writing stuff, I'm getting back into journaling. Um, and I didn't realize until recently the uh, really, you know, it's a great thing for your head, especially now in today's times. Um, well, anybody who ever knew me in school, if any of y'all are watching that, you pretty much know why I have that because that's kind of like who I was back in high school and grade school. Anyhow, um, but the journaling thing, I had no idea until I started doing it that well, how incredibly soothing and comforting and a way to order the thoughts. Um, so and this started, you know, of course, and this has got to be getting back into letter writing and stuff. And these are, open this out one handed like that, uh, fun little Chinese stamps and things like that with little translations on that tell you know, the neat little sayings. It's like the old antique version of a meme uh, way back in the day. And things, this literally funky old spoon literally is being thrown away and I use it um, to melt sealing wax with this right there. And I'm like, you know, if you're going to have something useful, um, why not make it really cool? And that's why I kind of like seeing what people are doing with, with um, old typewriters and old linotype machines. It used to be you couldn't give a linotype machine away, and now they cost a fortune. Anyhow, um, back to here, there's my sealing wax. And these are just acrylic blanks that I carved and made tassels for, and I use these for 
uh, I will probably be carving designs in this um, you know, to make page numbers for my journals. Anyhow, you know, just more things to snoop around. I don't know if we'll find out whether people really groove on videos of snooping around at people's writing desks. Anyhow, on to the main thing. Of course, this is all fancy and tidied up. Like when you have house guests, of course you're going to keep it nice. But I like how, let me back up a little bit here. I like how when this desk folds out, I mean, people, obviously it's a tried and true uh, design for a reason, because when you fold it up, it keep, makes you keep the writing surface clear. So, anyhow, I'm going to just zoom in on this, basically. Ah, oh, there we go. Anyhow, these, this actually came with a desk. Um, stamp box. Got a, I think it has 1890, 1898 written on it. Uh, more ink. That was actually, it actually works pretty well. I've got some ink in there right now. Uh, makes it a lot easier. It's, it's less likely to spill than these um, normal ink bottles. And these are, there's a journal that I covered in marble paper waiting to be filled. Here is more of those little stamping things. Um, they don't do too well with hot wax, but they're fun to just dunk in some ink and stuff. I have no idea what this thing is. I was told it was a um, market African market weight or anything like that, but it has a nice little design on it. Um, use once again use now that will work for sealing wax. And going back to you know, let's switch hands here. Um, just a little journal I picked up at a store, and then of course I fancied it up with Swarovski crystals and stuff like that, and now I use it for. Um, painted all over. And I use it for cute little sayings that I like. Kind of like Marcus and Lily's notations as I scratch the heck out of the desk. Um, there's one too, practicing my calligraphy and penmanship skills. Anyhow, another journal that I covered with marble cloth and stuff like that. And used a pair of earrings I don't know if you can see that. Use a pair of earrings to use as the clip. I figured that turned out pretty well. Now, put those back in there. More journals and inks and seals. More inks. Another old seal. A couple of paper blanks journals waiting to be worked on. More inks. And that is another seal I carved out of a chunk of Wyoming jade that I got off of eBay for cheap. Uh, the jade is really hard to carve on too, but I'm like, yeah, that's, it's amazing the things that we have available to us um, that you don't have to go looking all over the planet for. I mean, it's Wyoming, but still, uh, if you can do this, why not? Don't settle. You know, I started on Instagram something called, a uh, hashtag called don't settle for an off-the-shelf life, and this is pretty much why I'm doing this here. And more ink, another journal, and the little books that I use to write my haiku in, um, uh, fancy fountain pens and if anybody hasn't gotten into fountain pens yet uh, if you like to draw draw a lot or if you write a lot if you get a good fountain pen it writes like a Cadillac or a fancy car drives there's just no comparison once you get used to it and you learn how to uh, the quirks the quirks and tips to make them do their thing um, you'll never want a ballpoint pen again um, and if you take good care of them they can last forever um, this one and this one are, they're a few years old, they're about 10 years old. This one is brand new and it writes beautifully. This one, however, is at least 100 years old and it writes exquisitely well still. I mean, if you take good care of good things, you buy and cry just once um, and know what you're getting, it's worth it. I mean, I don't know what these things are going for now. If you can find one that's in good shape, you can, but they're not cheap, but you'll never really need one. Again, if you take good care of it. Anyhow. Um, but, oh, here we go. A little bit more in here. More sealing wax and inks and pen nibs. And this is a, I guess it's called wheel. It has all these different cute little sayings. Um, or sealing wax, or just literally you could stamp it in, in ink as well. But I just figured that's way neat. Who needs you know, stuff that you don't see around so much these days, but stuff that 
it takes some doing and um, try to have something that's not, once again, don't settle for an off-the-shelf life. It reminds me of that, there was a quirky group from the 1980s um, called the Buggles that had a song that had a phrase that says, in my mind I make a deal, buy the fake and sell what's real. And it just blows my mind that you can have something this nice right here with a little bit of looking for way cheaper than stuff you find at Ikea. And it's not for everyone. But if you could make it special just for you, why not? Um, you know, I, I'll have to show some more videos of the journals that I make. These are store-bought ones, too. But once again, with a good pen and a journal, and especially with the way things are going these days, um, when you write your thoughts down, it, it, it gets them out of your head. It, it's a de-stressing thing, and there's a ton of, ton of uh, self-help work on there out, out in the world in videos and online and stuff where you talk about journaling and the benefits of it, but I have to say it really does work. Um, not just journaling, but writing down ideas for future essays, um, you know, for future ideas for videos, or pretty much anything. And I live in a place where hurricanes hit pretty regularly too. And there have been times when I have not been able to access my files online, but these are always around. And if it's in waterproof ink, it's going to be around for a while longer if you take care of it. I mean, as I speak, you know, a big part of Texas is completely without power and without internet, without phone. Um, so basically, you know, this is a this is a thing that worked for people for a long, long time, and you know, there's there's a point um, to it. Anyhow, well, I hope this uh, gratuitous um, video of writing desk snoopage was entertaining and thought-provoking and maybe it will help people. And thank you for watching.